morning, beloved. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Father. Today in our readings, we get uh, to focus on or center on the what we could call the heart of God, getting to know the heart of God and developing the heart of God in our own hearts as well. And, we, and it fits in our bigger, overarching theme that we've been going on with discipleship and just as disciples of Jesus, learning to say what Jesus says and to teach what Jesus teaches, to do what Jesus does, especially when it comes to the actions of, of prayer, for healing of every sickness and disease, of prayer, to raise the dead, of prayer, to uh, drive out demons, to free people from any demonic possession or demonic influence in their life, uh, to wish peace upon every household or place that we enter. We were also looking at not so saying what Jesus said, doing what Jesus did, and then now thinking as Jesus thought. Remember, Jesus said to Peter a couple of weeks ago, Peter, you're thinking as uh, not as God thinks, but as merely human beings think. So we we're looking at, okay, how does God think? So we could get put on the mind of Christ. And now we're looking at, today we can look at the heart of God, the heart of Christ, and see, you know, what is God's heart like? What, what does he long for? What are the dreams in his heart that he wants to fulfill? And his heart, we see, always revolves around bringing people into his vineyard or bringing people into his household. Uh, so, in other words, the salvation of souls, right? This is God's heart. This is God's purpose. This is the center of God's life. And if we're uh, disciples of Jesus conforming our life to his way of life, then this has to become our center of life, too. We have to, our whole purpose every day, waking up every day, Lord, who can I talk to today about you? Lord, who should I pray for now for conversion, for, for their salvation? Who can I pray for? And so we, uh, th this has to begin to become our heart as well, longing for nothing more than salvation, of our own salvation, and the salvation of those around us too. Uh, so this is, so let's just break open the, the parable a little bit, pull out a couple of the insights we have today, looking at the uh, different perspective of the heart of God. We know on the surface, also, this parable is very similar to the, the parable of the prodigal son. Uh, there's a lot of the same insights, a lot of the same lessons, a lot of the same response. Um, uh, so, so Jesus, and, and the point, the same point, too. The point of the parable of the prodigal son is not, it, it's not really which son are you, the older or the younger, the one who went astray or the one who stayed in the household. Like, that's, that's a minor, that's really a minor thing. The real point in the heart of that parable is, is the heart of the father. The heart of the father who loves both the sons and is trying to bring both of them into the household and keep them both there. And that's the point of this parable too. It's not really which labor are you and oh, when, which hour did you finally get your butt into the vineyard and start laboring? You know? <laughs> the, the, the real point is the heart of the landowner. You know? See, look at what Jesus says at the very beginning here. Jesus told them a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. So the point of, the, of teaching us about the kingdom of God and what this lifestyle is like, what the heart of our Heavenly Father is like, is centered on this landowner and his actions. So it's like a landowner. He goes out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. So the landowner, of course, is God. The vineyard is the world in which we live. The laborers are really anybody, any believer, anybody who believes and begins to follow God with their life. The first laborers who get called at dawn are the Jews. They were the first ones God called to follow him to the land, of, to the promised land, and to begin laboring as a, to, to be an example by their lifestyle and bring in the other nations around them into a relationship with God. So the Jews were supposed to lead by example. They're the first ones God called. All the other laborers uh, are you and me, all the Gentile believers that came after the Jews, that we're the ones that come all, all the rest of the day. We see, uh, look how, again, how relentless God is for this, our salvation. He's constantly, this landowner, God, is constantly going out throughout the world looking for people standing idle, who, who are, in other words, not in his household, not living life in a relationship with him, and, and saying, come into my vineyard, come into my house, come after me, come follow me. It's the same as Jesus, right? When we see God become flesh, Jesus is always walking around, come follow me, come follow me, come follow me. 
he's kind of, notice also he's going out constantly uh, at the hour of prayer. He goes out at dawn, goes out at 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock. That's evening prayer right before the day ends at 6 o'clock. It tells us part of the way we're always to go out and for the salvation of souls is through prayer. Is that our prayer? How often are we praying? Are we praying every day? And how often are we praying throughout the day? And, and is our prayer for the salvation of souls? Is our prayer, God, bring me somebody today that I can share your life with. God, bring me somebody today. Who are you going to bring today that I can pray for? Is that our prayer? Because it needs to be, if it's not, if we want to have a heart like our Heavenly Father. Constantly, always going out. And then we see um, how generous our Father is, right? So, okay, so first, we have to, we have to do this. Um, notice uh, one of the points here in this parable is that God... God is calling us as believers into his vineyard to be laborers. We're called to work. We're called to work. Get your butt to work, right? If you're not sweating, working for the kingdom of God, then you're standing around idle all day. This should make you nervous for your own salvation. God calls us to work. He doesn't call us to sit around on our couch and watch Netflix all day. You know, you can watch a little show. But if you are vegging out on Netflix, you're being lazy, idle. You're not in the vineyard working. That should make you nervous because that means you're not in the kingdom. God doesn't call anybody to just... Remember, we said a couple weeks ago, we are watchers, but we're watchers for the salvation of soul. When we see the danger coming, we have to get off our butt and start shouting out, Danger is here. Sin is here. That's temptation. Don't go that way. That will lead you to hell. This is the way to heaven. See, why even watchers are very active, right? So God does not call any of us to be idle watchers. He calls us to be today out there and to labor. And he calls us, we have to do this while there's still time. Notice Isaiah in the, first, in the prophet there in that first reading. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found. That means there's going to be a time when God will not be found. When you can seek God and he will not, you will, you will not find him. Call on him while he is near. That means there's going to be a time when he will not be near. You can call all day long and he's not paying attention. He's not coming. So we've got to do this while we can. And when we seek other people for their salvation and pray for them, the good news is right here as well. Let the scoundrel forsake his way. You know, say, God, send me a scoundrel today, huh? <laughs> Let the wicked person forsake his thoughts. This is the good news. Turn to the Lord for mercy. Our God, who is generous and forgiving, God can't wait to give you mercy. He can't wait to forgive you. Turn away from, from the wickedness. Wouldn't you like just walk up to somebody today and say, Stop being a scoundrel. <laughs> Turn to the Lord who loves you. You can have fun with this, you see. It's fun being a laborer, you know. And part of the point, too, is the heart of our Heavenly Father is to learn to rejoice with our Heavenly Father for those who come into the vineyard, for those who believe, who enter his family, to rejoice no matter when they came. No matter if they're, if, you know, I mean, think of the disciples, okay? The apostles especially. They're there with Jesus from the very beginning of his ministry, and they're working hard. They're learning how to labor in the vineyard. Then they see Jesus on the cross. He's got that, those thieves next to him, and that good thief, he sneaks right in this guy without even working, you know? Right in... At the 5 o'clock hour of his life, at the last moment of his life, Jesus, remember me when you go to your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. And, you know, he didn't, at the very end, he gets to go to paradise before the apostles. They've been working with him since the beginning of the public ministry. In fact, he gets to go to paradise, hang out with Jesus, and Jesus tells those apostles, keep going, huh? Keep laboring. Oh, come on, Lord. <laughs> You know, sometimes maybe the, the, the cradle Catholics, they've been laboring since you were a baby in the cradle, right? And then some, you know, this convert comes out of nowhere and he's all excited. He seems to be experiencing good things with God. And you say, come on, God, I've been in this church longer than this person. <laughs> it's like the older son in the parable of the prodigal son, right? Well, he says to his father, all my life I've stayed here 
been working and obeying all your commands and all your rules and everything in this house, and you know, you still make this younger son who squandered all of his money, you still welcome him back in here and make him equal to me again? And that's the heart of our Heavenly Father. That generous mercy, always longing to forgive and bring back in. That's the hard part. We have to accept but learn to rejoice that we all get the same reward of eternal life. We get the same reward of eternal life no matter how long we've been laboring in the vineyard. There is a difference, though. There is something that you get for laboring longer than the person next to you. Huh? You have to think about it a little bit, maybe. First, if you're laboring longer, you get longer intimacy with God while you're here on earth. Huh? A deeper relationship with Him. You also get a lot more glory stories, right? As you are sharing and witnessing to other people, you get to share and witness God's effects in their life, God's transformation in their life, how God is changing them. You get to be a part of their journey. They get to be a part of your journey. And you get to, and imagine then when you do get to heaven, You'll be, and they're all in heaven too. You're sharing, you're all rejoicing together because all of you helped each other get to heaven. The good thief, he's kind of hanging out watching on his own, huh? So you do get something for laboring longer. But at the end of the day, we all get the same eternal reward of eternal life. And I think we'll all be there probably together, rejoicing together, just that we can all be there because realizing none of us really deserve to be there. It's just God's generous mercy and and forgiveness that he gave us, that invitation. Father, we pray you just continue to stir up our hearts with your Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, show us how to labor in your vineyard for the salvation of souls. We pray you give us courage every day to ask you to send someone our way that we can witness to, that we can tell them how wonderful you are. Now, we pray all these things together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.